We're just over a week away from Election Day, and although more than 25% of San Diegans have already cast their ballots, for those of you who haven't, I got a chance to chat with the chairman of the San Diego County Republicans, Tony Kervark, and as usual, he didn't hold back about his thoughts and feelings about this year's races and the candidates. We're less than two weeks away from the election, and I know that the San Diego County Republicans have created a voter guide to help Republicans who are registered in the county uh, make their decisions when they go to cast their ballot. What races are you guys keeping a close eye on? Well, uh, the reason for the voter guide is, of course, everybody knows about the big races, you know, president and so forth. But, uh, of course, as a county party, we're involved with local elections. That's county supervisor, uh, city council, school board, mosquito abatement districts. Uh, and uh, we want to, of course, elect Republicans. Of course, we have a lot of local races that are, that are um, uh, key. Uh, county supervisor, uh, Kristen Gaspar. In East County, we've endorsed Joel Anderson. We have San Diego City Council races with Noli Zosa and uh, Joe Leventhal. Yeah, one of the ones that you didn't mention, but certainly the entire country is watching is the 50th district race. And for the first time in decades, it's not gonna be someone from the Hunter dynasty. Obviously we saw in the last election, Amar Campanajar, the Democratic candidate in this race, came dangerously close to defeating Duncan Hunter. Um, are you guys worried at all about being able to keep a grip on the 50th? I think the 50th is a solid Republican district. You have to remember, President Trump is going to win that handily. So a voter is going to go vote for the Republican for president and then for the Republican for Congress. Uh, Kempenajar is a slick uh, guy. Uh, he, he, uh, he's uh, pretty clever out there, uh, trying to disguise himself and his, his policies. Daryl Issa is a great candidate. We had a spirited uh, primary, of course, uh, but uh, we are 100% united behind Daryl Issa. For a lot of these races, people who don't live in those areas aren't going to see these people on their ballots, but one that everyone in the city of San Diego is going to see is obviously the mayoral race, and we have two Democratic candidates, Todd Gloria and Barbara Bree. What should Republicans who live in the city of San Diego do with that one? We had a great candidate in Scott Sherman, and uh, the voters and their uh, quote-unquote wisdom uh, chose to have two Democrats so they can uh, uh, choose their poison, if you will. We're not supporting uh, either of them. They're both terrible candidates, and uh, San Diego will be worse for it. Uh, they're just two sides uh, uh, of, the, of the same coin. Todd Gloria is the little golden boy. He's a, uh, a Nathan Fletcher wannabe, and Nathan Fletcher is a Gavin Newsom wannabe. Uh, and then Brian Mainshine's in there as well. Uh, these are all uh, guys running around trying to get to the next uh, uh, stepping stone in politics. Uh, and uh, but Todd Gloria is terrible, and Barbara Bree, I don't know. I don't think she knows what day of the week it is. So these guys are, uh, and lady and gentlemen, are uh, just that. I'm leaving it blank. So you're not even going to vote in the mayoral race is what you're saying. I will never vote for a Democrat. All right. I have a perfect enough. track record well, of not I, doing you, so. You, and I'm not going to start now. my next question because I was going to ask what should people in the 53rd district do? We have Georgette Gomez and Sarah Jacobs. Uh, you know, what are people supposed to do with those? Both people? of them are going to vote for Nancy Pelosi for speaker. So if you're a Republican, you know, just uh, uh, you know, uh, keep that in mind. So now we're not endorsing, uh, we will never, would never endorse a Democrat. We think they uh, bring uh, uh, bad policies and they're led by the, you know, the worst. Look, look at the Democrat Party is completely off the rails. Uh, you know, put Americans last. Uh, they are, uh, you know, coddling criminals and, and, and uh, keeping our country shut down and, and uh, pretend that borders don't exist and uh, partial birth or uh, you know late birth abortions. I mean, this is an extreme party. Uh, and so for law and order and common sense and uh, putting Americans first, it's, uh, you know, I'm an immigrant, came, uh, came from Sweden. Um, I want America first. I don't, I don't give a hoot about Sweden. I came from Sweden, that's great. I left Sweden and I'm in America for a reason. So this is the greatest country in the world. We should put Americans first. And President Trump does that, and, and Republicans do that as well. So leave it blank in the 53rd, and God help the city of San Diego with either of these two mayoral candidates. I mean, is it really productive to tell people not to vote at all, though? I mean, shouldn't you be in People are going to vote. You know, listen, I'm the party chairman. I will never vote for a Democrat. It's just, you know, but uh, people are going to, of course, make their own decisions. I, I'm not going to advise them one way or the other. You know, of course, most Republicans will end up voting uh, one way or the other, but you know, I'm not going to put my uh, name on any of these two uh, sinking uh, Titanics. Even though we're seeing a lot of the numbers in some of these areas in the county um, go more Democrat, you're not worried about 
the future of the Republican Party here? Absolutely not. The Democrat Party is completely off off the rails, and uh, these things go in trends. They go up and down, or whatever. The and so I think uh, you know the future is bright. Our party is on offense. We're nominating candidates. We did a drill where we nom uh, looked for candidates. Uh, there are 180 uh, seats where no Republican was running when we started back in. Uh, July, I think it was, and we whittled that down to that. Ultimately, there are only 55 races that Democrats won by default, and we won 88 races by default. So we did a fantastic job of the logistics of recruiting candidates, getting uh, candidates on the ballot, denying Democrats the ability to win uh, races by default, and we did a better job than the Democrats. So not everything is about voter registration. It's a, I don't want to say it's a lazy way to do it. It's an easy way to look at, okay, well, that, and, and it, it gives you some guidance, but ultimately it's who's the, uh, who is, you know, do we nominate candidates, who turns out to vote, uh, and who does the best, uh, the better job of campaigning. Uh, so, and that's why we have a Republican mayor in a city where Republicans are the uh, uh, third largest party, if you will, if you count decline to state as a party. So uh, we'll continue to do that. And we'll have voters come to us um, and vote for our candidates. So I'm not, I'm not too worried. Well, as always, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And I'm sure I'm going to be talking to you closer to the election and probably even afterwards, too. Thanks so Go much to for Go to SanDiegoRepublicans.org for the official Republican voter guide. And straight ahead on Politically Speaking, we dive into the final presidential debate and ask in this home stretch what this race is really all about. Stay with us.